I, I just sent. <laughs> I just sent. It's my first day here. We've done this for 508 days. And I just sent Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kick Family from welcome screen to farewell screen. As opposed to bringing them into the camera and the mic. <laughs> Uh, hey guys, what's up? We know what we're doing. We've totally done this before. <laughs> um, this is something that I said yesterday, not here, in a different environment. Um, one of my favorite environments, actually. And it's that um, maybe from a leadership position, maybe somebody that has been trusted with an opportunity. That's anybody, really. Uh, anybody who has any level of decision-making, contribution to society, like honestly, whether you're a teenager, you're in your 20s, you're in your 30s, 40s, doesn't matter. Um, I think no matter what we're doing in the business realm, entrepreneurial realm, trying to start our own business, uh, a corporation, uh, I don't know, g gain a, a, a social media following, whatever, the, the religious circles, education circles, arts and media, government, and all these different arenas that we find ourselves in, um, I'm okay experimenting because I don't really know what works. And what worked, and this is, this is for serious, I've learned this the hard way, and I think we do have a reading here, family, um, from James chapter one, what I've realized, and I've learned this the hard way, what worked last year doesn't work this year. Um, so I have the honor and privilege of teaching at a local ministry school. Um, and I thought that I could save myself time by bringing last year's teaching that I like formulated and crafted all on my own. It was like an evangelism course that I literally just put together myself last year and it went really really well got lots of good feedback on it lots of good fruit people within the next seven days were like doing the stuff and they came back and they're like i learned this in class and i and i did it immediately and it's just just the turnaround to see people learn and then go do it like the next day and come back the next week with like tons of what we call testimonies um of them like applying what they learned uh, and how it works in the real world, real world application is just phenomenal. And I thought I could like honestly copy and paste, cut and paste um, last year's evangelism course into this year and it didn't work. That's going to preach. Forget about James chapter one in Exodus chapter 16. It talks about manna. And God's instruction for God's people was every single day there will be fresh bread. Every single day there will be your daily bread. And you don't need to hoard like some orphan, and we can talk about that and unpack that, some kind of religious mindset, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Guys, why were we hoarding so much toilet paper? What was up with that? And it's just as if God is speaking to us right here, right now from Exodus chapter 16. Guys, you don't need to hoard toilet paper. I don't know if anybody was around in 2020 and you just, everyone was around in 2020. The only thing that wasn't around, toilet paper. And so the Israelites, it's very silly, right? And, and so I, I think that's going to help us communicate just how silly it is when we hoard. And it breaks my heart because I have the pleasure and the honor and I'm not even over at your house. Okay, so you will drive through and maybe this is you. Maybe this is literally a little too close to home. I will drive through my neighborhood. I will visit people's homes because I have the pleasure and honor to go to people's homes. And there's rooms. There are rooms full of junk. There's just rooms that are dedicated for hoarding. Hoarding which means collecting junk that you haven't used to which said hoarder myself would be like, that's not junk. Uh, that's from grade one. I like, I like totally painted that when I was a kid in the 1980s. That's not to which the hoarder would be like, but then if you haven't used it in, in like a year, chuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like get rid of it. Cause I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. This is really going to preach. We need to get rid of stuff. 
we hoard unforgiveness. And we hoard even attention because we do not have a healthy self-esteem because we are not healed. And we are not whole people. So we jump on social try, trying to validate ourselves through the likes and the comments of other people. And we just hoard all of this stuff, unforgiveness, grudges, and we don't let it go. And sooner than later, and we don't even know it because that's the thing with like clutter. That's the thing with hoarding junk. You get blind to it and you walk by it and you don't even see it because it's a part of your environment and it becomes a part of your life. And you don't even notice that it's there until a friend or a family member comes over to your space and to your house. And they're like, oh, what's that? And you're like, I didn't, I totally forgot that that was there. Exactly. We need friends and family. We need people like Mama Kristen and Papa Jeff to come over and honestly be like, hey, what's that, Jeremy? I'm like, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even know that was there. That's, that's been there for five years. And maybe because I trust Papa Jeff and Mama Kristen, they'd be like, I think it's time to get rid of that. And I'd be like, I agree with you. We, we're going to make room and, and we'll just clear out the junk, the unforgiveness, the stuff that we've been holding on to, and we don't even know that it's there anymore. Um, so maybe you've seen that. It comes from fear. Like this hoarding mindset. And I, and I use this term. We've talked about it. One of my favorite live streams. It wasn't a freestyle Friday. It wasn't a casual Friday. It was on a Friday. It was a very fiery Friday where we talked about the difference between, and you can look this all up on Facebook as well as YouTube. Watch the replays. Um, the difference between the orphan mindset and the new covenant child of God mindset, the orphan mentality and a true child of God. And, and, and when we are not children living in new covenant mindset, living with the orphan spirit as opposed to an adopted spirit, like in, adopted and engrafted into the family of God as, as true sons and daughters, um, the orphan mindset will always think, I do not have enough. I will not have enough and I will always run out. And with that, which is exactly what God wants to free you from, we hoard and we collect things that we don't need. And it's just rooms dedicated to junk. When in, Ecclesi when in Exodus chapter 16, God is very clear. And when he says one thing, he's also saying many things at the same time. Especially when we consider that Jesus is on every page. We're not even going to talk about how Jesus is the true bread of heaven. The New Testament manna, as it says in John chapter 6, the whole chapter. In Exodus 16, God is like, listen, Israel... Listen very carefully. Every single day, there is going to be manna on the floor, meaning like provision, meaning like carbohydrates, meaning like actual food that they would eat in the desert. God provided. You might be in a desert right now. I have good news for you. God will provide because God will not guide where he will not provide and he will not lead you where he will not feed you. And we have been praying for provision and sustainability. Happy two-year anniversary coming this Sunday. And God, in Exodus chapter 16, as I guess we reference and maybe paraphrase as opposed to read today, is like, hey guys, very clear instructions. Um, every single day, there's going to be new manna, fresh manna on the ground. There's going to be fresh food and provision that just materializes on the ground. So God's like, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow there will be provision. There will be food there for you. So only take what you need. And we see the orphan mindset in the heart of Israel, in the behavior of Israel, in the hands and in the head, talking about a mindset, the orphan mindset, the orphan spirit, as opposed to the new covenant, you are free from fear and you understand that there will always be enough. And they began to hoard and take more than they needed. And the instruction from the Lord, just clear direction, don't take more than you need. Don't save any leftover for tomorrow. Talking about just hoarding. I don't even know what the topic of today's conversation is. We're breaking fear. We're breaking like hoarding and collecting. And we just can really live in the moment. Because if we truly want the presence of God, we need to be in the present moment. As opposed to maybe even cherishing our memories more than we champion our future. 
we need to understand that there is a person when it comes to the presence, that's God himself, but there is also a time when it comes to the presence of God, and it is the present moment. Otherwise, we will, we will see in our lives what we read about in the Holy Bible, where it was the religious people who knew the scriptures. They knew a God in principle. They did not even recognize God in person. When Jesus was standing in front of them, speaking to them, telling them to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins, meaning to prove to you that the Son of Man, Jesus, has the authority to forgive sins, that he is God, because the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees and the religious leaders, they were like, who is this? Who do you think you are that you can forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins, is what you will read in Luke chapter 5. And Jesus is like, you're right. Only God can forgive sins. But to prove to you that I, Jesus is saying, that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins, watch this. And he says, he says, pick up your mat and walk. So Jesus and the guy picked up his mat and walked, and everybody was like super excited. And they were like, I, guys, I think this is it. I think this is him. Some of them were like, yo, this is him. And some of them were like offended. Knowing more about God in principle than in person which is a horrible tragedy because God is a person and God is relational. And when we relate to him as children of God, only then will we no longer hoard. When we understand that God takes care of us, and it's actually incredibly freeing because you don't need to hoard anymore and live in fear and uncertainty and doubt and hysteria and, and what we will read in Exodus chapter 16 is that the manna that they kept, the bread that they kept overnight when God was like, don't keep anything for the next day. Learn to trust me is one of the many things that God was doing. Learn to trust the fact that I will provide. Learn to understand that I am good and that I'm actually trying to free you from worry and fear and uncertainty and doubt. But they didn't get it. And neither do we. We still hoard and we still collect. And we're, we're like, you know what? I don't think God can come through for me. So I need to do it myself. And so we hoard all of this stuff thinking that it will save us. Bro, your garage and your attic and your basement and your bedrooms full of junk will not save you. The only thing that will save us is if we give God our junk, give God our trash, and he will give us his treasure for the greatest exchange, Papa Joseph Dent, the great exchange. And so the Israelites would wake up the next day and they realized that everything that they've been hoarding, the manna that God told them not to keep for the next day, it turned into maggots. And many of us, myself included, we've been hoarding so much stuff, it's just turning into rotten, disgusting, no good maggots that are eating us up from the inside out. I'm actually thinking of the Holy Bible. In the book of Acts, there's this king. His name's King Herod, and he would not give praise to God. And what happened was he was eaten from the inside out by maggots. Disgusting. So is everything that we hoard. What is this? This is literally filth. This is literally everything that we've been keeping, everything that we haven't given over to God. We said this the other day on short form video. It's posted on all of our platforms. You know, John chapter 10, verse 10 says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, meaning the enemy, meaning the devil steals, kills, and destroys. And then we proposed kind of this question. And it's like, yo, what if the devil would never steal from you again? There is one way. The devil cannot steal from you ever again if you've already given everything to God. Therefore, you have nothing left. Nothing is yours. Therefore, nothing could ever be taken away from you. And you will therefore become untouchable and, yes, my friends, invincible. Why? Because we simply just follow the counsel. The counsel. As in the wise counsel of God. Honestly, humanity, people kind, and I speak for myself, we can't even sleep on time. We can't even control our diet. We don't even... 
know when to eat, sleep, and train, exercise. These three simple, basic human needs we have trouble doing. I think it's safe to say that we would benefit from wise counsel. So when God says, don't keep the manna, don't keep today's manna for tomorrow, don't hoard like some orphan who doesn't understand that they are a child of God. So when God says, let today be today and tomorrow worry about tomorrow, don't keep today's manna for tomorrow because tomorrow there will be fresh rain and fresh bread from heaven. To which Jesus says in John chapter 6, I am the bread of heaven, the true bread of heaven. Jesus is eternal life. So at the Last Supper, we'll just go with 1 Corinthians chapter 11. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, maybe some of us have heard of the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper. Maybe some of us have seen the painting or the memes. And it's like Jesus and all the disciples, they're like sitting on one side of the table for some reason. <laughs> the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper. Uh, it's this iconic historic scene that actually pertains and relates directly to, yes, the first Passover, which we read in Exodus chapter 12, but then also the manna in Exodus chapter 16, uh, also the New Testament manna that is the living bread of heaven himself, Jesus Christ, and 1 Corinthians chapter 11, as I guess we're just referencing the Bible today and not reading it. Jesus says at the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, he takes bread, and he says, this is my body. And he hands it to the disciples, to the apostles. And he says, take, take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he takes a cup of wine and he says, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. What does all that mean? We're going to talk about the cross we're going to talk about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and how everything points to Jesus. Every chapter points to Jesus. Jesus is on every page. The Old Testament and the New Testament are equal witnesses to the one Christ. So when Jesus was saying, this is my body, taking bread, it was bread. And he said, this is my body, take and eat. And in like fashion, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In John chapter 6, when he said, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood in order to have eternal life, that's John chapter 6, he was not actually talking about his actual flesh and his actual blood because we see at the Last Supper, when Jesus says one thing, he also says many things, and he has this way of speaking future forward or even pulling the future into the present because he is timeless. And so in John chapter 6, he says, you must, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not have eternal life, is what he actually says, because he wasn't scared of losing followers. To which, if I was on Jesus's, like, public relations team, uh... Jesus, as your PR representative, I really don't think that's what we need to be publishing. I just don't think that's a statement that represents our organization very well. Jesus doesn't care. He's like, yo, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not have eternal life. And everyone's confused. Everyone's like, as we all are in this moment, what does Jesus mean? And many people stopped following him. Until the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, which I think 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is a great passage that we're going to reference. He says, he says, this is my body. And he takes bread. He takes bread and he says, this is my body. And he gives it to the disciples, take and eat. And then he takes the cup and he says, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. So when we receive communion with the Lord, when we dine with him, Jesus himself is salvation and communion, the Lord's Supper, is a statement of faith by which we are saved. Because by receiving communion, you receive Jesus. And unless we receive, com unless we receive communion, we will not have eternal life, meaning Jesus himself. Because he is the tree of life. Okay, so in the Garden of Eden, we see 
many trees, two of which trees in the center of the garden, there was the tree of life and then there was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And as long as Adam and Eve cont continued to eat from the tree of life, the fruit from the tree of life, they would live forever. Sadly, that day came to an end and they were unable to eat from the tree of life. Until Jesus. The cross of Jesus Christ is how you and I, humankind, let's put it this way. Through one bite, the world was broken. Through one bite, the world is restored. So, in Genesis, through one bite, Adam and Eve, they ate from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Boom, the world was broken. Through one bite, the world was broken. However, when we receive the Lord through communion, the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, through one bite, the world was broken. Through one bite, the world is restored. What Jesus has done on the cross is that he has proven that he himself is the tree of life. And when we eat of the fruit of the tree of life, because what does it say? It says that Jesus was hung on a tree. He was crucified. When he was nailed to a cross, proverbially and prophetically, the, he, he himself is the tree of life. And when we receive him, that is his flesh and his blood, as he was saying in John chapter 6, and as he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, which is bread, which is the cup of the new covenant, we can live forever. We eat from the tree of life and we live forever. He is eternal life. The gospel is on every page. The Old Testament foreshadows the New Testament and the New Testament illuminates the Old Testament. On one hand, sure, you're reading about Adam and Eve. On one hand, sure, reading about Moses and the Israelites, fantastic. To an even greater extent, you're reading about the same person you are always reading about, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Every chapter in the Bible is pointing you to Jesus and every chapter of your life, including this chapter, including this very moment, is doing the exact same thing, pointing you to Jesus. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verse 27. Acts chapter 17, verse 27. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. This very moment in time. So in this passage, Acts chapter 17, we're not going to read all of it. It's talking about creation and it's talking about human origin and the beginning of the world and God's mind and God's purpose and why. It's God's why. We see here God's reasoning and God's why for people, for creation, for the way things are. Why are things the way they are, God. And here we see clear and concise the answer. Acts chapter 17, verse 27. His purpose for everything, why? His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. So you might be asking yourself, why am I in this part of my life? Why am I in this chapter of my life? In the same way, every chapter of the Holy Bible points you to Jesus. Every chapter of your life is pointing you to Jesus. And we just read it here in Acts chapter 17. All of this is purposed so that you could possibly reach out, feel your way toward him, and find him. His purpose was for the nations, that's all of us, to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us. He is closer to you than you think, and he has been speaking to you and reaching out to you more than you understand and realize. What makes me say that? First and foremost, the Holy Bible. Secondarily, I was an atheist. I never used to believe in this stuff. I actually believe that there is no God. I believe that God is fake, that God is not real. Until I realized that he is real, and he is really reaching out to me. And he is closer than we believe. Closer than we understand and think or give him credit for. And then I look back at my life now. And I'm like, dude, he was there the whole time. Gently wooing me and winning me to him. 
inviting me into the most beautiful thing that any human being could ever discover, personal relationship with him. He, himself, the New Testament manna, the bread from heaven, the true bread from heaven, the tree of life. And when we eat of, of the tree of life, dude, everything changes. The world is restored. Through one bite, the world was broken. Through one bite, the world is restored. Where do we start? What do we do now? We receive Jesus into our life, a statement of faith. Salvation and eternal life is a person. It's not actually a 10-step program. It's not a 12-week masterclass. It is a person. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. And when you have Jesus, as we will hopefully invite you into today, because this is an invitation for you, if right now you do not believe in Jesus, but you want to, why should I? Babbling, bobbling, red hat Bible boy? That's a great question. Because what has happened to everybody will one day happen to the rest of us. We will all go the way of the world. Our bodies, our flesh, have a shelf life, an expiry date. The good news, why should we believe in Jesus, is when we believe in Jesus, we will actually not die. We will live forever, known as eternal life in heaven. Eternity is a very long time. Our time on earth is very short. Do what you can. Do the most important thing that you can do. Receive Jesus in this short window of time known as human life on earth so that you can spend eternity in heaven. You will hear of a day where babbling Bible boy has died. Do not believe it for a second because I will have not died. I will have simply had a change in address, meaning eternal life in heaven, and I will be experiencing the fullness of life that we can not even comprehend on this side of heaven yet. Not to mention the forgiveness of sins, because we all, we've all done something wrong, what the Bible calls sin. When you believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. When you believe in Jesus, you, you get into heaven, but heaven gets into you, meaning you begin to experience heaven on earth and life even eternal life on this side of heaven, you get a glimpse of what it's like. You get a glimpse of freedom. And you won't hoard anymore. There will be no fear. You will be fearless. You will be untouchable. Never ever will anybody steal anything from you again because you will be so free from the economy of humanity. Popularity, prestige, none of that will matter. Because when you have the tree of life himself, Jesus, you realize that everything else pales in comparison to this one person, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So the decision is yours. Many people have made this decision on our live stream as we have been doing this for two years now. And every single week, we have at least one person who decides to go from not believing in Jesus to believing in Jesus. Atheists, agnostics, Luciferians, Satanists, people raised Jewish, people who are Buddhist come in here. They're like, I'm Buddhist. My whole family's Buddhist. And then they respond to the same invitation that we're giving you. And then they say, no more Buddha, only Jesus. I must get a Bible. These people don't even have Bibles. Now it's your turn. I'll tell you what that means and, and how you do it. How do we believe in Jesus? What does that mean? How do we do it? To believe in Jesus means that we simply believe that Jesus is who he is and that Jesus has done for us what he's done for us. We change our mind about Jesus. This change of mind is what the Bible calls repentance. Now surely, if somebody is having a genuine and truthful change of mind, their life will demonstrate that. You will see it lived out through their actions. That's what true and genuine repentance looks like. Somebody turning from sin, turning toward Jesus. That's how we do it. That's what it looks like. That's what it means. It's when you believe that Jesus forgives you for your sins. That's what it means to believe in Jesus. This is how we do it. It's when you believe Jesus forgives you of your sins, gives you eternal life in heaven, and you believe that Jesus has done for you what Jesus has done for you. There is a cost for our wrongdoing. There is a penalty for our sin. It is a death 
penalty. The good news is that Jesus died in your place when he was crucified, paying your personal death penalty for your individual sins. When he was nailed to a cross, then he was laid in a tomb, and then he resurrected from the dead three days later, proving that he is who he says he is by fulfilling over 300 predictions or prophecies about who exactly the Savior of your soul is. So if this is you, and right now you do not believe in Jesus, however, through this invitation, you you want to. You want to believe in Jesus, receive forgiveness for your sins, eternal life in heaven, heaven on earth, personal relationship with God. If this is you, I will lead you in a guided prayer. It is not the prayer that saves you. It is only Jesus that saves you, but you can repeat the prayer after me. We will pray to Jesus together as we guide you in your first few steps, if this is you. And right now, you do not believe in Jesus, but you want to. You want to receive forgiveness for everything you've done wrong, what the Bible calls sin. You want to get into heaven and you want heaven to get into you. And right here, right now, you want a personal relationship with God. And all you are doing is changing your mind, believing that Jesus is who he is and that he's done for you what he's done for you. If this is you, just repeat these words after me. Say, Jesus, today, I believe in you. I receive forgiveness for my sins. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried and you rose again. I welcome you into my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If this is you and you've responded to this invitation, which means you did not believe in Jesus, however, through this invitation, you now do believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. This is very, 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 very good news. Also, you have eternal life in heaven. Also very good news. And heaven has already gotten into you. Like, it's confirmed. When you pass on, you are getting into heaven. You can experience heaven right here, right now, namely personal relationship with God. God. So if this is you and you have responded to this invitation, which means you did not believe in Jesus, however, through this invitation, you now do believe in Jesus, just let us know. Just let us know. We would just love to embrace you, receive you, cheer you on, champion you, maybe pray a prayer of blessing over you and your life and your circumstance and definitely give you free stuff. So if this is you and you are responding to this invitation, which means you did not believe in Jesus, however, through this invitation, you now do believe in Jesus, just type I did in the live chat. Just type I did in the comment section. Maybe you're watching on replay if you've responded to this invitation, which means you did not believe in Jesus. However, through this invitation, you now do believe in Jesus. Just type I did did. I did. Again, we just want to love on you. We do not want to embarrass you. We only want to embrace you, receive you, cheer you on, champion you, maybe pray a prayer of blessing with you about your life and your current situation. Definitely give you free stuff. Maybe this is something you have already done months ago, years ago, and you already have a pre-existing relationship with Jesus. But honestly, for the past few months, maybe the past few years, you have not been prioritizing your already pre-existing relationship with Jesus. But you want to. Today, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus after turning away from Jesus for months, maybe even years. If this is you and you are rededicating your life to Jesus after turning away from Jesus for months, maybe even years, just type I do. In the comment section, just type I do. In the live chat, maybe you are watching on replay. If you are rededicating your life to Jesus after turning away from Jesus for months, maybe even years, just type I do. Again, we do not want to embarrass anybody. We sincerely want to embrace everybody, pray with you perhaps, definitely give you free stuff. 
Once again, if you responded to our very first invitation that we first gave you, which means you did not believe in Jesus. However, through that first invitation we first gave you, you now believe in Jesus. Once again, just type, I did. I did. Our online pastoral care team uh, from different regions and time zones are live with you right now in your chat section. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Kick, Instagramily family, and TikTok. Six different platforms live, six different chat sections. I'm just going to join in and uh, see what's happening. Some of my favorite peeps in the house, Blue Valentine. Boom. In on Twitch fam. What is up, Twitch fam? Joe Visitor, of course. Kara Winton back in the house. Have been seeing Kara Winton on Instagramly family as well. Uh, just talking about going full send for Jesus over here. So, so good. Joe Visitor, let's go. Got some jokes about the Sadducees. That's why they're sad, you see, says Joe Visitor. That's a good joke. Pharisees and the Sadducees, that's why they're sad, you see. It's because they couldn't see Jesus. They just didn't recognize God when he was standing in front of them. Uh, Renee Robinson in the house. Let's go, buddy. Saying hello to Mama Mary Ellen. Uh, Mama Kristen adding somebody named Aaron. So is Mama G, Gloria, Gloria. So is it's Mary Ellen, y'all. So is Kirsten Fiedler. Lambriel in the house. Okay, so we got this person named Aaron or Adog is their other screen name, 224. Adog224, also known as Aaron, because TikTok gives us two screen names for every one person. Every one person on TikTok has two names. It's out of our control. That's what TikTok does for some reason. So if you don't know who we are referring to, it's for that reason. But this person's Names are Aaron or a dog. Let's all pray with Aaron if we could. Uh, no matter what platform you're on, Aaron's saying, I do rededicate my life to Jesus after turning away from Jesus for months or years. This is huge. God, we thank you just for a huge blessing. Yeah, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Aaron, we just gather around you in this time, right here, right now, during this chapter. Man, I just see the faithfulness of God in your life, season after season, chapter after chapter, and it has led you to this moment in time for such a time as this. Those words are coming from the Holy Bible, Esther chapter 4. Thank you, Lord. It's like a pivotal moment in your life. Thank you, God, for Aaron. Wow, wow, wow. Scripturally, actually, Aaron was the one person on the planet. Aaron's very special, scripturally, and right in front of us, TikTokily, scripturally, and in terms of our new friend, Aaron, a dog. Aaron was the high priest, and he was the only human being on the planet that could go into the most holy place. God, we just thank you for, um, for Aaron, for their call for the plans and the purposes that you have for them. The one and only Aaron, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And we just celebrate forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. Eternal life in heaven. All of heaven rejoices and celebrates. And we just join in with what is already happening in heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Um... I just see wheels. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you work with wheels. I don't know if that means anything. I just see wheels. I don't know if you're in like the automotive industry or what. Um, the wheels are turning. Let's go, God. God, we just thank you. It's like wheels of creativity. It's like motion. It's like it's like ministry in motion over Aaron's life within him and upon him in Jesus' name. There's like this thing with wheels and it's like all-terrain wheels and God is giving you all-terrain ability to traverse tumultuous terrain that you have never been able to do before. But right here and right now, a brand new pair of wheels, a fresh set of wheels in Jesus' name. God, we just thank you for Aaron in Jesus' name. It's like it's like a tire rotation. I don't even know what this is in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 
Amen. Uh, hey, Aaron, I'll make my way through the rest of the chat. Thank God we are an online pastoral care team and family. There are many people in your chat section uh, responding to you already. Um, I'll do my best to catch up, but maybe you're making a decision for Jesus today, like Aaron on the TikTok, and you're like, hey, now that I made a decision for Jesus, now what? Now we just deepen and develop our relationship with Jesus by spending time with him every single day. That's why we have for you, Aaron, or anybody else making a decision for Jesus today, a free downloadable resource titled How to Have a Daily Time with God. Just like it sounds, it's going to empower you and equip you to understand the Bible every single day. It's going to teach you how to apply the Bible to your life every single day and be in relationship with the God of the Bible every single day. Short, clear, concise, moderately, aesthetically pleasing guide. Uh, free and downloadable for you. Aaron, if you're on the TikTok, you just go to my main TikTok profile underneath my profile picture, basically link in bio. There's a link and that takes you to the website and you can download uh, the Daily Time with God resource for free. If you're on the Instagramly family, same thing, just link in bio, go to the main IG account, and then underneath my profile picture, there's a link, that's a link to the website. From the website, you will see the Daily Time with God button, and you can download the How to Have a Daily Time with God resource for free. If you're on the Facebook or the YouTube, there is a link to the website in the written video description for the Facebook and or YouTube live stream video. That's the link to the website. From the website, you can download the How to Have a Daily Time with God resource for free. If you're on the Twitch or the Kick, it's in the About section of the Twitch and the Kick platforms. Pretty easy to find Twitch and Kick. They know their way around the interwebs. I'm gonna make my way around the comment section Yo, Kirsten Thieler, dedicated to the Lord. Wouldn't, wouldn't doubt it for a second. Let's go. We got the best peeps. Yeah, Camel Bible, literally. Joe Visitor saying. Okay. Um, so Twitch fam, we've already said what's up to our awesome Twitch peeps in the house. Uh, we're going to see what's happening over in Facebook neck of the part. There are some <laughs> tailors in the house. Let's go. Hi, everyone. Grateful I can join. Let's go as they're chatting with Cat, probably Cat Kate Cafe, unless Mama Cat Abshire is on YouTube. I haven't made my way over to the YouTube. I think I saw Sam Smith today in a comment and I do see Sam Smith here. Let's go, Samuel Smith. Um, Yo, let's go. Taylor's just gonna pray with their family today as we're reading in the Facebook comments. That's huge. Um, Talking about all sorts of amazing things oh yeah like the bread of heaven the true bread of heaven john chapter 6 being jesus himself trusting god yeah exactly his mercies are new every day taylor is saying just partnering uh with the word of god and and emphasizing uh what the scriptures say absolutely as we were talking about manna and how every day there's provision uh referencing exodus chapter 16 let's go yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So many good comments. Tuning in from Mexico. Let's go. It's such a humbling honor for people who are on vacation to tune in to live stream family. Uh, WJ Leahy, public information, joins us when they're on break at work. You're using your break time from work to join live stream family, humbling. You could be doing anything on vacation or on break and you choose to spend it with us, which is like actually such an honor. So we love you guys. Um, love our peeps. Let's go. Marcus K in the house. Boom. YouTube side that is. Taxi girl in on the YouTube side. Um, Lisa McDonald. 
everywhere. You know what? The more Lisa McDonald, the better. Somebody shout, amen. Uh, saying hello to the fam here, Unknown Adventures, also known as Mama Harriet, in the house as they're adding Marcus. I love the way people take care of people. Alive for life. Let's go, buddy. Love alive for life. Um, been journeying with us for quite some time. Both actually on the front lines as well as behind the scenes. I'll use this opportunity to say follow people on whatever platform, subscribe to people on whatever platform, connect, direct message so that even when we are not live, you can actually continue to message each other, pray with each other, send each other wholesome memes, or even chicken and broccoli and brown rice recipes. That was basically the recipe. You got it, three ingredients, chicken, broccoli, brown rice, that's it. Congratulations, you now have the best chicken, broccoli, brown rice recipe available. Unknown, let's go. We know unknown. Mama Victoria in the house. Samuel Smith, let's go. Is there any way we can donate? Yeah, Sam Smith, thank you for saying that um, and asking. Uh, we might come back to that. DeGrith is in the house. Um, we love DeGrith. I would literally not be here. We would not be here if it wasn't for DeGrith. Um, everybody say what's up to Dagrith, D-A-G-R-I-T-H on the YouTube. Uh, as Dagrith has been joining us on YouTube, they make music, follow them, subscribe to them, absolutely smash that like button on Dagrith's social and platforms and follow them. Um, yeah, Sam Smith, I've been reading some of your comments it's good to have you here live with us because i see your comments on our replays on our short form vertical videos that are on many platforms now um can, is it okay if we share your story samuel smith sam smith comes in and is like hey guys i'm basically bedridden I've been missing school because of back pain and other important engagements and commitments because of all this back pain, basically bedridden. Can we pray? We pray live on live stream. Sam Smith gets healed, gets up, and starts walking. Uh, a few days later, they play that live stream, the replay where Samuel Smith got healed. They play that replay for their friends, and their friends decide to believe in Jesus Christ. Two of their friends. And then Samuel Smith's mom is asking, yo, wait, time, time, how do, how do I donate? How do I like literally gift like a nominal gift so that we can sustain what we do here and continue this in terms of longevity so that this doesn't have to stop and we can continue basically being a free public service because this is absolutely free for everybody it's costing nobody to be here it's costing some of us maybe everything to be here uh and we're we're truly doing this together as a fam and so sam smith just thank you for asking um since we're so into it right now we might as well uh it, I don't know if you have the link to the website. Um, you can also email me and we can talk a little bit more about that because I think everybody wants this to be sustained. I think we all have a common interest and goal and that is to keep this going as long as we can, like simply by covering the costs in terms of the what it costs to do what we do, how we do it. Um, so on the website, Sam Smith, you, you go to the website. So if you're on the YouTube, which you are, there's a link in the YouTube video description. That's a link to the website. There's PayPal, there's credit card. Um, what we find most beneficial is actually committed monthly partners. Uh, that's going to help us budget and basically project and understand what's happening. Um, sure, we just we just actually unpacked how God's going to provide, and we've been here for two years, so so far so good. Um, but we want to be here for at least two more because we had actually a comment from. What is their screen name now? They keep changing it, which is fine. God's new creation. They're streaming in live from Germany. They're like, hey, I love this family. I hope we can keep in touch five years from now. Uh, I agree, you know, um, and if not, for whatever reason, if this isn't sustainable, that's okay. We just spent a lot of time talking about the orphan mindset. If this thing runs out, then it runs out. Like we don't have to fear. We'll just go somewhere else and just like get more friends and family and Jesus. 
what we've always been doing here, message of Jesus, miracles of Jesus, family of Jesus. And thank God that this isn't, and I truly mean this, thank God this isn't the only environment that has the message of Jesus. We preach the gospel, people get saved for 500 days in a row now. Um, the miracles of Jesus, we have doctor verified healing miracles, tumors shrinking, scoliosis, surgery canceled, doctors wanted to do a hysterectomy, surgery canceled. And we also have the family of Jesus where people are now meeting up in person. People who have only known each other from online family have now met up in person, spent the night together like sisters in Christ kind of a thing, like girls having girl time, having slumber parties and sleepovers and breakfast. We have men of God calling each other on the phone and we're like breaking the fourth wall and people are just being healed just in community and family. And so even if for whatever reason, I'm just saying like, there's no fear. Like we're so good. Like we're so good. You know what I'm saying? No matter what happens, um, just total peace as we were opening up with uh, in terms of the TikTok and Instagram family pregame show. But Sam Smith, thank you for asking. Uh, I know Bonnie has been asking publicly as well, as well as Drew Purcell and, and Mama Victoria. And um, we just thank you and we honor you. Anybody who is helping us sustain, which is one thing, uh, covering the costs, the longevity of what we do here. So that's Devon Technologies. Uh, that's Resurrection Apparel. Uh, and that's also straight up sales and hobbies and many more people, some of which have asked to remain anonymous. And people who have helped us develop because Papa Gerald was like, and we're going to read about this. This is a teaching moment. We're going to read it. <sighs> I really don't want to. I really don't want to. I really don't want to. Papa Gerald was like, how do I gift the live stream family equipment? Because Gerald was like, how do I give you guys a podcast microphone? We're now using Gerald's equipment every single day. We're now using J-Rob's equipment every single day. Jeremiah gifted us these lights. We're now using Mary Ellen's equipment, Lisa McDonald's equipment, Joshua's equipment. Somebody anonymous gifted us a computer. It's a, it's a high ticket item. A computer? Bro, somebody believes in this thing so much that they gave us a computer? It's just... It's, this is where it's going. Galatians chapter 6. This is where we're going with this. Galatians chapter 6. I, I, I got to learn how to use this. Okay, Galatians chapter 6. This is, this is where we are. Oh, we were just talking about it today. We'll just read it before I... Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says this. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says this. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. Some language that we might be more familiar with is do not grow weary in doing good. And when it comes to um, offering free public services, honestly, and when it comes to preaching the gospel, maybe we want to go with message of Jesus, miracles of Jesus, and family of Jesus, I will ask seasoned in person, I will ask, and in private, in person and in private, seasoned ministers of the gospel. And I'm like, hey, man of God, now that we've seen miracles, signs, wonders, deliverance, families restored, marriages restored, addiction flee, be a thing of the past, doctor verified healing miracles, salvations, discipling the nations, like literally now that we've seen everything and we've done everything, like what do we do from here? And over and over again, I'm hearing the same thing. Do not grow weary in, in doing good. You just keep going is what they say. You just do it again. You just keep doing it and you show up. And there might be something else here that um, I'm a little weary of reading, but we'll read it and then we'll hug and we'll just bounce and it's going to be good. This is literally three verses before in Galatians chapter 6 verse 6. You can do whatever you want with this. It is here. We'll read it. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. I honestly did not know this was in the Bible until I read the Bible. 
those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. And that's it, fam. Um, maybe we'll just pray with some more people or something. We got to thank God. Okay, let's pray. God, we thank you for provision. It's not even about the live stream. God, we just thank you for the lives. It's not about the live stream. It's about the lives that are here, the people, God, the families. God, we just thank you for the people that are here. Maybe they don't have a family. God, we just thank you that they can have the blessing in Jesus' name, that they can have the provision, that they can have the salvation, meaning Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Numbers chapter 6, God, I speak the blessing of God that you would smile and shine upon every single person here, all of the lives on this live stream in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And we declare and decree what we just read in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Do not grow weary in doing good. God, we just thank you not only for provision in terms of sustainability. We thank you for provision in terms of strength. In terms of longevity and legacy, that we're not just here for a good time, but we are also here for a long time. And I and I and I speak about the lives here in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. That nobody burns out, that nobody gets taken out, that nobody, and this is very for real, this is like very serious, nobody has momentary character lapses that ruin everything. Maybe it's a career. Maybe it's a marriage. Maybe it's a ministry. God, we just thank you for provision and longevity, sustainability, that nobody has momentary, because that's all it takes, my friends. A moment. A momentary character lapse. Everything's over. God, we just thank you that you provide us with hearts of integrity, hearts of character. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's what's going to help us make it, hearts. Purity, purity, purity in Jesus' name. Okay, Matthew chapter 5. This is huge. Why is purity so important? <sighs> hashtag purity culture. It's a trend. Honestly, hashtag purity culture is a thing. It's a real hashtag. It's a trending hashtag. Um, Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 says this, and then we're done. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. God blesses words of Jesus. Kind of important. My Bible doesn't have as uh, Joe visitors talking about my Bible. Like, this is what I ended <laughs> this is what I ended up with. Like, honestly, I'll say this first. Go Bible shopping. Go Bible shopping. Shop for a Bible. It's like way more fun than shopping for a new car. Oh, that kind of hurt, but it didn't. I would love to go car shopping. Not as much as I would love to go Bible shopping. Get a Bible that is yours. Get a Bible that you would actually read, that you love to hold, that is yours. You, It is your personal relationship with the word of God. Spare no expense. Nobody else talks about this stuff. Do it. Go Bible shopping. Mine doesn't have the words in red. People are like... <laughs> Because as young adults, we all went Bible shopping together. <laughs> Trendy hashtag cliche things that young adults do together. I mean, I could think of worse things that young adults could do together than Bible shopping. And one of our young adults at the time, they were like, I must have the words of Jesus in red. I must have the, because there's Bibles with the words of Jesus in red. Um, if you've read the Bible, you won't need the words of Jesus in red because you will recognize the words of Jesus even when he whispers. And you don't need them to be highlighted in red. That was not a rebuke. That's actually an invitation. That's actually just, you get to know the word of Jesus. You can, you can, you can just tell, like John in the Gospels, Peter didn't even know it was the Lord until John was like, guys, it's the Lord. That's who we want to be. We want to be like John who can identify, guys, it's Jesus. And anytime at any page, we can just flip and be like, I know who this is. It's the words of Christ. Uh, Matthew chapter five, verse eight, words of Christ. God blesses those whose hearts are pure for they will see God. Why is purity important? For many reasons. One of which reasons I would say the most important reason is because that's how we see God. 
God blesses those whose hearts. There's that word again. We were talking about hearts as we were just praying and just blessing. I don't know. What do you want to call this? The benediction. We're just like... Uh, God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. Oof, which goes to say, I mean, I'm just, this is what the text, this is how the scriptures are reading. This is how the text reads. If it's the pure in heart that see God, that means, because everybody has this question, why can't I see God? How come I don't feel God's nearness? How come I haven't heard the voice of God? Bro, it might be a hint or a clue, a gentle nudge that, bro, um, you're impure. That you need purity. And that's simply coming from the words of Jesus. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. By default and definition, if we are not seeing God, and it's the pure that see God, then what's going on? God, we just thank you for purity. It has to be purity. It has to be holiness. It has to be surrender. It has to be repentance. Not out of guilt trip, because that is the worst and most wretched kind of repentance. Only a wretched sinner would need to be continually whipped and flogged and guilt tripped into repentance. The best and sweetest kind of repentance, my friends, is to be wooed and won by the goodness of God. Romans chapter 2. Verse 4, it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. On that note, hey, if we were unable to get to your question, comment, concern, prayer request today, we apologize. The fantastic news is we are here Monday to Friday, every single weekday, even on holidays. Same time, same place, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kick, TikTok, and Instagramly family starting at 3.33 p.m. Pacific, 5.33 p.m. Central, 6.33 p.m. Eastern. Lots of opportunity for anybody and everybody to come back and receive the care and prayer and attention that you would like. Um, and yeah, we just speak healing in Jesus' name. We don't even need to pray. It's just the presence of God. People just log on and they're like, what's going on? They're like, I had back pain for months. But when I, when I logged on, when I just scrolled through TikTok and I landed on this live stream, all my back pain, seven out of 10 back pain that I've had for months is just gone. Um, so we just bless you and, and we commission you just to receive healing from the healer himself, Jesus, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. And like Sam Smith, maybe you want to tell us about it. We'd love to celebrate. Um, and I think that's it. We might have Holy Spirit after party, might not. Uh, we'll figure that out in the next few minutes. Just write, I will host. It's just another TikTok live stream that immediately follows this one. It's chill. It's cash. It's like a box of chocolates. Never know what you're going to get. We never know if it's even going to happen, but we will find out in a few minutes. If we don't see you at Holy Spirit after party, nobody is excluded. Everybody is invited. Uh, then we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. God bless. <gasps> uh, bye bye
Shaboom! Shapow! Shapow! What's up, YouTube, Facebook, Kick, and Twitch fam? We back in the house. Only the real ones stay. Seriously, only the real ones. So you're at the movie theater. Everybody has to go to the bathroom after the movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got better things to do than sit around for post and credit scenes. Only the real ones hang out for post and credit scenes. What is up? Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. No Holy Spirit after party, but no worries, as we were talking about today. Lots of referencing, very little reading, but um, I think that works. It works for us. You just get a lot of Bible just very quickly. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. God bless. Ah, <gasps> oh, bye-bye.